Hello and welcome to Top Shelf Board Games. I'm Hubba. And I'm Sabrina. And today we're going to be doing a how to play video for Zombicide Black Plague. So for the how to play video, we're going to break it up. It's a long video. There's a lot to go over in this game. Um, and we're going to we're gonna go at it as though you've never played Zombicide. So there's going to be a lot of content. And the way we're going to do is we're going to break the video down into sections. Uh, so we're going to do a setup. Uh, we'll have the basics. Well, we'll go over line of sight, movement, some definitions, um, how to read the cards, how the cards work, and then we'll do the player phases, all the actions that you can do on your turn. Then we'll do the zombie phases, and what, what happens during the zombie phase, the spawning, uh, how they move, how they attack. Um, and then we'll do... Uh, we'll talk about the necromancers, we'll talk about the... Uh, Which is something new. Yeah, which is new to the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also point out the new things that are added to this game that are different from the original zombie side. Right, some of the rules are different. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about vaults, necromancers, which are two different things that have been added to the game. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll break it down in the, in the comments below so you can see what time be you easier to the whole thing. navigate your way through this video. with. with so that hope in, it's very informative. Yeah. So with that in mind, check it out. Alright, this is the setup for Zombicide Black Plague. So the first thing you're going to do for setup is you're going to choose a quest. Uh, for this video we, we're doing the Big Game Hunter, which is the first quest. Um, the quest In the quest book it'll show you all the different things that you need to, to, to gather. For instance, the amount of doors, how many objectives, it'll show you where to place your uh, spawn points. Your vault doors, it tells you where to place everything. So, uh, we've placed our characters down, we've got all of our doors placed. The vaults, we've got the objectives. For this objective, or for this scenario, the uh, blue token was placed randomly among the red X's. Um, that's one of the objectives that we have to do in this scenario. And then the X's were placed out in the places they were supposed to go. Uh, you set out your vaults, you get, separate your vault cards, and shuffle them and put one in each vault. And you take your uh, weapon cards, your equipment cards, and you got that deck over there, you shuffle those. You got your zombie spawn cards, and you'll shuffle all those and get them ready. Uh, it usually helps to have some zombies already set out because you'll be spawning zombies pretty quick and getting them on the board. You got your necromancer over here and your abomination you also have any miscellaneous tokens like the noise tokens set close to the board and then you also set up your player board part of your player board setup is taking all the starting equipment cards and distributing them out among all the the characters and as a, as a group, you can decide who gets to start with what equipment, or you can deal them out you know, randomly. It's up to the group that you're playing with. You also place your little markers. Uh, this is your health marker. You place it in the zero. That means you've taken zero wounds. You got your extra markers up here. Down here, we have a marker on iron hide. This indicates that uh, Samson has this ability active. And then as he levels up, he'll be able to uh, choose and select different abilities that'll customize his play experience. We've also started Samson with two short swords and a hammer in his backpack. Uh, the backpack is the area that is not a, it's, it holds the equipment and things that you aren't actively using. Down here at the bottom of the uh, dashboard, we have the tracker, the experience tracker. Right now, both characters are at zero, but as they kill zombies, they'll move up for every kill that they, they get. And once you move into the new color, that's when you unlock your new actions or new abilities for your character. Um, so when I move into the yellow, I'll be able to unlock the plus one action, which will give me a fourth action. Um, when I move into the orange, Samson will be able to choose whether to 
select the plus one die combat or the plus one die roll melee as his special ability. And once you get in the red, same thing, you'll be able to choose one over there. Uh, so that's the setup of Zombie Side. So let's go into some of the basics. All right, some of the basics for Zombie Side. We're going to talk about uh, line of sight. We're going to talk about um, movement, uh, what zones are, and some definitions. So uh, before we can do anything, we got to go over the board and how it's broken up. The game is the board's broken up into zones. If you look at the board here, you can see kind of a square on all the different tiles. Each square is one zone. Um, inside a building, each room is also going to be one zone. Doesn't matter the shape of it, as long as it's one continuous, one solid room, then that'll also be one zone. So this whole room is one zone. Um, over here, this whole big giant room over here is one zone. Um, likewise, we have the street zone up here, we have a building zone up here. This is just a room zone, another room zone. Um, you got kind of an awkward room zone over here. Uh, and so those are zones. Anytime you you move, you're going to move from one zone to another zone. Um, line of sight, you're going to have to be able to go through the different zones. So let's uh, talk about line of sight. Line of sight um, is pr it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just think about a normal person here. Uh, Samson. Can basically can't see through walls, obviously. Um, you can see as in a straight line as far as you can until you run into a wall um, or a closed door. Um, so Samson can see all the way down to here. You can see up here. Um, you cannot see diagonal, so Samson cannot see this zone, nor can he see the zone up here. Um, if this door was open. Samson would be able to see into this first room here, which this is just one room. So he can see all the way into this room. Um, if there was a door here, for example, that was open, uh, since there's open entries in all these rooms, Samson can still only see into the first room inside a building if he's standing outside of it. Um, he wouldn't, he'd be able to see this room, but he wouldn't be able to see into here. Line of sight rules change slightly if you're inside of a building. If you're inside of a building and you're standing in this room, you can see out the door and you can see as far down as you can as long as you're standing next to the door. You can see in a straight line as far as you can. So that's line of sight. Let's go over uh, reading your equipment cards. So on your equipment cards, you got uh, what, what the name of it is, you got whether or not you can use it as a dual wielding. Dual wielding is basically if you are carrying two weapons of the same name that are dual wielding and they're both in your active slots, then you can use both weapons for one action. Um, so let's take a look at the hammer here. The hammer, if you look on the card, tells you whether it uses noise or not. When you use this weapon, it makes no noise. All right, so th this is your range. So for the hammer, it's got a range of zero, meaning that you can only attack in the same zone that your character is in. Um, this is how many dice you'll roll. Uh, so for in this case, when I use the hammer, I'll roll one dice. This is the accuracy, so that's what I need to roll on the dice in order to kill a zombie. And then this is the amount of damage that this weapon does. Um, to kill most zombies, it only takes a one damage weapon, but to kill a fatty, fatties cannot be killed by a weapon that only does one damage. They have to be hit and killed by a weapon that does two damage or more. Um, and so this would allow you to kill a fatty, whereas the short sword here only is a one damage weapon, so it can only kill regular zombies and runners. All right, so let's go to how to open doors. Uh, different weapons or any equipment will have the door symbol over here. And if it has a dice symbol next to it, 
That means in order for this weapon to open a door, you have to roll a dice. And in this case, you need to roll a four or greater. Um, so you would roll the amount of dice listed on the equipment, which in this case is one. And then I would need a four in order to open that door. I would also place a noise token down next to my character because this weapon is gonna, is gonna make noise when I try to open the door. Um, so in this case, roll a four, which would open the door. Uh, so that's opening doors, that's reading your equipment. Let's go ahead and go over uh, uh, the noise tokens. Noise in this game, zombies are attracted to sight first. They go to the, the survivors that they can see. However, if uh, zombies can't uh, see anybody, they go to the noisiest spot on the board. Um, characters create a noise just for being there. The survivors are noisy, they don't. They always create a noise. So in this case, there's already two noise right here in this zone. Um, if Samson had tried to open the door with his hammer, um, he would have created another noise. So now there would be a total of three noise in this zone. One for the token and one for each survivor. Um, and then if uh, Nelly over here tried to, tried to open the door with a weapon, um, for instance, her short sword, it also would create noise. And so you'd put another token over here. And now there would be four noise in this token or this zone. And so what what that means is when you go to do the zombie phase and zombies go to move, um, if they can't see any zombies they'll, or any survivors, they'll move to the zone that has the most noise. Um, so noise can be used to manipulate the zombies and get them to go and move where you want them to go on the, on the board um, if, if you use it right. Let's see, we already talked about the danger level, the skills. Um, the skills, uh, for instance, Samson here starts with Iron Hide. Iron Hide, uh, in, in the back of the rule book, it goes over and breaks down what Iron Hide is, what uh, spell casting is. There's tons of different abilities. Um, and the rule book will explain, or in the back of it, will explain you know what each of those does. For Samson, Iron Hide, basically, he has really thick skin so he has an armor save even though he isn't wearing any armor. Um, normally in order to be able to do an armor save during attacking or when he's attacked you'd have to have a piece of armor in your in your uh, your armor slot um, but he just automatically has that and so skills are, are really cool they, they add a lot to the game they kind of give you, your character a unique feel and uh, everything's explained in the back of the book. So let's go over uh, the different types of zombies and then we'll get into the player phases. So you got four different types of zombies in Black Plague. You got your regular walkers. Uh, they come in a few different models. Um, but these are your walkers. They're just your basic zombies. Uh, when they move they only move one zone at a time. Um, they only get one action, so they would only move one space. Actually, in this case, they would move towards the zombies, or the survivors. Um, they, it only requires a weapon with one damage in order to kill a, survive, or to kill a zombie. And that's your walkers. Next, you have your runners. Your runners come in a couple, couple different models as well. And your zombies, when your walkers or your runners, when they move, they actually get two actions every every zombie phase. Um, so they'll either, if there's nobody in their zone, then they'll move. And if there was nobody in this zone, they would get their second action and they would move again. However, if they started in this zone, their first action would be to move because there's nobody in their in their zone second action would be now they're both going to attack um, and we'll go over a combat and fighting and how that works uh, here in a little bit but the runners get two two actions and that's the thing you got to keep in mind they either attack or they move um, and so they, they're really fast zombies they move across the board really quickly next you got your fatties whenever a fatty enters the uh, 
whenever a fatty is spawned, he comes with two walkers as well. Uh, so the fatty always comes with extra reinforcements. Um, when attacking a fatty, you know, we, we talked about it earlier, you have to have a weapon that does at least two damage. Um, so in case, you know, this hammer would be able to uh, be used to kill the fatty. Um, whereas the short swords, even though I'm dual wielding them, they each only do a total of one damage. Uh, so even dual wielding one damage weapons wouldn't be able to kill a fatty. You have to use a weapon that does two damage. Next, you got your uh, Necromancer, which is a new model to Zombicide. The Necromancers, they when they come when they get spawned onto the onto a spawn point, they actually come with their own spawn zone. If a zombie, if a Necromancer card is flipped during the spawning phase, he would actually bring a new spawn phase or a new spawn zone, and then we would draw another card to spawn for him. So he could end up coming with a whole slew of, you know, extra guys with him. The Necromancer also adds kind of a timer into the game. Uh, every time he moves, he isn't gonna go try to attack the survivors. He's actually gonna try to move and get to the closest uh, spawn point that's not the one he came from. Um, and try to run away, basically. If he runs off the board, um, then the, the spawn point that he came on with stays, stays there permanently, and now we have more spawn points. Also, if six spawn points get put on the board at any time, and he leaves, then the game will end, and the Necromancers will have carried out their, their devious deeds and won, and won the game, and the survivors would lose. So they act as a he acts as a timer, and um, if you kill a necromancer, uh, you get to choose any spawn point on the board to remove. So we could remove, you know, this spawn point up here, so that way we could get up into this room easier. Um, and so that's the reason to go after the necromancer. The last model in the game is the abomination. The Abomination is a really tough, tough zombie. Um, he's very, very difficult to kill. There's not any weapons that do three damage. Uh, really, the only way to kill an Abomination is to uh, get some Dragon Bile, which is this card right here. Once you get some Dragon Bile, uh, you, can, you can use it and throw it into a zone. Um, and you break the dragon bile on the floor basically and so you put the dragon bile token down and then if somebody has a torch like this uh, the dragon bile token can be can be lit on fire and so if you were standing next to the dragon bile you could cast this or throw this torch in there and light it on fire and when you light it on fire, it goes up in flames, and anything in this zone, um, including an abomination, you know, if you had, you know, 15 zombies in this zone, everything in that zone would be uh, destroyed. Uh, so the dragon bile is is really powerful, and it's about the only way to kill an abomination. There is uh, Samson actually has an ability that he can he can be able to kill an abomination with a two damage weapon but that's really dragon bile is the only way to really kill the abomination so when he enters the game you tend to run away from him um, he only he only has one activation each each zombie phase so he just moves one zone or attacks um, if you kill a abomination though you get five experience points most zombies when you kill them only give you one one experience point um, the walkers, runners, fatties, necromancers all just give you one experience, experience points. Uh, but the zombies, or the abomination, will give you five experience points. Uh, so that's the zombies. And that's kind of how the zombies work. That's how they move. That's how they, uh, they, move, they, uh, they attack, what you got to use to kill them. Um, the, the final thing here that we didn't talk about is vaults. 
Uh, these vaults are sealed chambers. Um, and the only way to get into them is to open a vault door that corresponds to uh, the vault. So this purple door would, would allow you to get into this purple vault. So if I spend an action to open it, I can then go down into there and then I can spend an action to pick up this vault card, um, which is a special card, which is a really powerful one actually. I could put that into my my equipment. And then I can use the vault. I can either come back out the way I went, or I can find the other vault door, which is actually clear across here on the other side of the map. And I could open this door. And now I can come out over here and into this building. Um, so vault door vaults allow you to uh, teleport across the map very quickly and to you know go underground and, and run you know move from one side of the map to the other to avoid zombies. Zombies can enter into the vaults though. Um, you know if a bunch of zombies had followed you into the vault you could actually shut the door and trap them in there. Um, that's that's your vaults and that's how vaults work. <coughs> Uh, that's the biggest thing they allow you to get some new 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 cards and they allow you to teleport across the map really quickly so let's go over the player phase to the player phase and we'll go over all the different actions that your characters can do on their turn keep in mind we're only using two survivors on for this for the the video here, but you will be playing with six total survivors in every scenario. All right, so let's go over movement. Movement we already have kind of mentioned, uh, but when you move, or when you start your turn, you get three actions. You always each player starts with three actions, um, and you can use the little extra tokens here to keep track of the actions you've taken. Um, you know, one of the things we do sometimes is. We'll use the extra slots up here, um, and when we do our first action, we'll put a little token in there, so that way we know we've used one action. Uh, but movement, in order to do a movement from one zone to another zone, that costs one action. So if I wanted to get down over to here, you know, I could go one movement there, which costs one action. Another movement costs another action, and my third action would move me over to there. And that would use all three actions for my turn, and then that would that would be it. That'd be all I'd be able to do. I would have to wait till next turn to open this door, or wait till somebody else was able to open it. Um, so that's movement. Movement you can't go through doors that are closed. Um, so you have to open this door before you could go in there. You can't go through walls. You can move through people. Um, however, there's some differences with zombies if they're in your zone. For instance, if, if Samson here was here fighting this zombie, well, let's say he was fighting this fatty, and he didn't have a two damage weapon. So Samson's gonna get hit. Um, if he wanted to avoid that, he could try to run away from, from the fatty. Um, the way movement works when there's zombies in your zone, though, is it costs one action to move, and then it costs an additional action point for each zombie in your zone. So in this case, it would take two action points to move away from the fatty. One for the regular movement, and then one because of the figure in the zone. Um, if there was two zombies in there, it would take three actions. One for the regular move action, and then one for each uh, figure, which would be three actions to move away from there. So, if you had four or five zombies in there, you're not going to be able to run away from them. You would be stuck in there and you'd have to fight for your life <laughs> to, to survive. Um, so that's movement and how movement works. Alright, next is going to be searching. <clears throat> when you search, you can only search inside a room. You can't search on the open streets. Uh, so you'd have to open a door and, and move into a, into a room in order to search. You can also only search once per turn, uh, per character. So you couldn't spend three actions searching you know, in the, in the rooms. You can only search once per turn per character. So when you search, you just say, I'm gonna search, and you'll draw a card from the uh, equipment deck, 
and you flip it over and see what you got. So in this case, Nelly found a repeating crossbow, which gives her a better range, zero to one. It's quiet, it makes no noise, gives her three dice, and she needs fives on those rolls to hit. It also is a one damage weapon, and she can use it as a dual wielding weapon. Uh, so that was a good search, that was a good find for Nelly. Um, anytime you search, you get a free rearrange action for your equipment, so if you can go ahead and equip it and move things around for free when you search. So maybe she wants a repeating crossbow and not, not her short bow anymore. Um, so that's searching. The next thing you can do on your turn is you can open a door. And so let's say they're right here. And Samson was going to use his hammer to open the door. Uh, he would roll the amount of dice listed on the hammer, which is one. And he needs a four in order to open the door. Plus he's going to create noise doing this. So he'd roll. And I failed to open the door, so my first action failed. Now, let's say he wanted to try again. And his second action didn't open the door. Uh, and it's hopefully this next time he gets it. All right, on the third action, he finally opened the door. Because um, he got a five, which is higher than the four on the hammer. So the door would be busted open. And anytime you open a door for the first time into a, into a building or a room, you would then go through and spawn zombies in each of these rooms. Um, in fact, this, this whole, all these rooms are connected. So opening this door would spawn zombies in every one of these rooms. And so you would just, you know, start with this first room. You'd flip over a zombie card and you know, spawn your zombies. And we'll go over spawning and how that works here in a minute. Um, but that's opening a door. Uh, the next action you could do for your turn is you could reorganize and or trade with another character. Um, so, uh, say you were coming across to Fatty and was right here, and Samson has his one damage weapons. Well, they're not gonna be, he's not gonna be able to defeat that Fatty. But in his backpack, he's got a hammer that does a two damage weapon. So he can spend an action point to reorganize his equipment. So he could bring the hammer and pull it up into this hand. And let's say he also uh, had picked up some chain mail and for whatever reason it was in his backpack. He could take that chain mail as well and put it in his armor slot, um, which if you notice up in the corner, instead of a hand, it's got a little body symbol and it matches, that tells you that it goes in this slot. Um, so he could put the armor here, and now he's got chainmail armor that gives him an armor save of four plus. So basically when he gets, he gets hit, instead of automatically taking damage, he'll be able to roll dice and try to avoid it. Now he's also got the hammer that had those two damage weapons, and so now he's geared up and ready to fight the fatty. Uh, so that's reorganizing. You could also trade with somebody who's in the same zone as you. And you can, it doesn't have to be a fair trade. You can give all your stuff to them or you could take everything from them. It's, you guys decide what you want to trade. And that's reorganizing and trading. So next let's go over the um, take, it, take or activate um, an activation token. Um, so this door was open and we'd moved in. One of the actions you could do uh, for one action point is you could take this activation token. Um, and you would take it, you'd put it in front of you, you'd flip it over, because in this case we're trying to find the blue, the blue X, which this one isn't it. And you get five experience points for taking an activation token. So you would move your track up five, and now you got five experience points. All right, next we'll do, we'll make the next action you could do on your turn is you can make some noise. Uh, so instead of, instead of, uh, instead of attacking or moving or anything, you could just sit there and make a bunch of noise to try to get the zombies to come to you. So you could spend an action to make noise. You could spend another action to make some more noise. And you could spend another action to make some no more noise. That would make it to where in this case, when this zombie goes to move, he can see both Nelly and Samson. 
However, Samson is making the most noise. So he, he would actually turn and come towards Samson, which would leave Nellie, you know, that would help Nellie out. You know, maybe she was still trying to break this door open. This would get the zombies away from her and give her more time to open that door. Uh, so that's one thing you can do is make noise. Uh, the other thing you can do on your turn is do nothing. You can just waste your actions and not do anything, which, you know, usually isn't a good idea. <clears throat> All right, let's get into the heart of some of the player actions you can do. Uh, the combat actions and the enchantment action. So let's do an enchantment action. All right, one action you can do is an enchantment action. Um, and if you look on your card, it'll say enchantment, uh, which means that it's not a combat action. It, it can't attack, it just is an enchantment. Um, in this case, this is a healing enchantment and it, uh, will make noise when you do it. And for instance, this one is once per turn, the targeted survivor recovers one wound up to his total. Healing can't be used to resurrect a survivor. Uh, so basically, um, enchantments is you can use this as long as you can see the character that you're trying to use it on. Um, in this case, she, Samson could see Nelly. He could use the healing enchantment once per turn and target a survivor that he can see and she recovers one hit point. So he could heal Nellie. However, this does not bring somebody back from the dead. If they, if Nellie had died here, he couldn't bring her up back alive. Um, so that's how enchantment works. Enchantments you can cast on targets or zones as long as you can see them. Um, and so that's an enchantment action. All right, let's get into the heart of the player actions, and that's the combat. Let's go over combat. The basic kind of combat, you have three different types of combat actions. You have melee combat, you have ranged combat, and you have magic combat. So we'll go over melee combat first. So, let's say Samson, in order to do melee combat, you gotta be in the same zone. And you'll use your weapons that you have. Um, let's say Samson had his, his two of his short swords. Um, so a melee combat for Samson right now would be he has two short swords, they, have, they share the same name and they both have the dual wielding symbol. So he can use both of these weapons for one action. That, which means he would take the dice from each card, so each, each card is going to generate one dice for him. So you get a total of two dice for this action. And then he would roll them and he needs to roll a four or higher to kill zombies. Roll the dice, and he did really bad. So neither dice was over four, so Samson swung and missed for his first combat action. So let's say his second action, he wants to do another melee attack. This time, he got one hit and one miss. Uh, this is greater than four, so he hit with this one. And when you're doing melee combat, because you're in the same zone as all the zombies, you can choose which one you want to kill. So in this case, he could choose to kill the runner because the runner has two actions. So he wants to get rid of the runner. And that would give him one experience point. So he'd move his experience tracker up one. And now he's at six. And then he does one more action so he could do another melee action to try to kill these other two zombies. Ooh, and double fours. So he did two... He, hit, he killed two more zombies. Each dice will kill a zombie, so um, that four kills that one, and the other four kills this one. Um, he gets an experience point for each one of those guys, so he gets two more experience points, which moves him to eight experience. Now, once he went over, once he went into seven experience points, it actually unlocked the next ability, the next skill for him. Um, so we would take one of these extra uh, tokens and we would mark the yellow skill that was opened up by the yellow on the track bar. And so now, Samson has one additional action that he can use. So now he, instead of the three, he actually has four. Um, and so now Samson can move, or now he could do a ranged attack and attack this guy. Um, now he has just more actions that he can do. So let's go over ranged attacks. Let's say Nellie's over here. And Nelly sees a group of zombies like this. You got a walker, a runner, and a fatty. Uh, Nelly has her repeating crossbow, which is a one damage weapon. 
Um, it gives her three dice for the attack, and it's a zone of zero to one. So she can use her repeating crossbow in the zone she's in or one zone away. So she can use her repeating crossbow to shoot this zone. So she's gonna go ahead and do that. And she needed to get a five, which she didn't. So that was one wasted action. So she's gonna use a second action to attack. Ooh, and this time she got one hit as when you shoot into a zone that's, a, that's not the zone you're in, uh, you have to go off the targeting priority. So the targeting priority is you, you'll, she'll target the walker first, then she targets the fatties, then she targets the runners, and then she would target a necromancer if, if the necromancer was in there. Um, and so that's how targeting pri or priority goes. So in this case, her one damage would kill the walker. She'd have to choose the walker because the walker is the first in the t targeting priority list. But she can't kill the fatty because she only has one level. Um, then she could attack again, but it's actually going to be kind of pointless because she got she got a hit on her next attack, right? Well, we do a walker first, but there's no walkers, so then we do the fatty. Well, the fatty, remember you need a two damage weapon to kill a fatty. Her repeating crossbow only does one damage, so the fatty would just absorb that damage and, you know, he wouldn't be, Nelly wouldn't be able to kill him. Um, even if she had rolled multiple hits, the fatty would, would absorb all that damage. So, uh, you know, that's all she would be able to do. She'd only be able to kill, you know, the one walker. Uh, so that's ranged combat. Let's go over the magic combat. Magic combat is pretty much the exact same as, as the uh, ranged attack. However, it's you have to use a combat spell during the combat phase, or the magic phase. The uh, combat spells, it'll, it'll tell you right on the card. In the, this mana blast has a range of zero to one. It gives one dice, accuracy of four, and does one damage. Um, so the mana blast actually wouldn't be any good in a situation like this, because once again, the fatty's just gonna absorb all of that magic, the magic attack. But if you had, you know, couple of walkers in there and a runner you could you could do your attack and get one dice and you need four or higher and so that first action wouldn't do anything the second action would kill a walker that's the first targeting priority and that's basically your combat actions they're basically the same uh, the, the, the thing that makes it different is there's certain characters that have spell casting uh, which allows them to do extra actions that are magic actions. And so if you have a character that's proficient in magic, you can you can attack more with magic spells as opposed to just regular ranged weapons. Um, and so that's all of your player actions and all the things that you can do during your player phase. Um, obviously you won't be able to do all of them because you only start with three actions, but you can choose between all those. You can move, you can search, you can open doors, you can reorganize and trade, you can do a combat action, whether it's melee, ranged, or magic, you can do an enchantment action, you can take an act, a token, an activation token, you can make noise, or you can do nothing at all. And that's what you can do on your player phase. Alright, so let's go over the zombie phase. The zombie phase is broken up into two sections. The first step is the activation of the zombies where they either move or they attack. The second step is the spawning of spawning new zombies onto the board. So the first step of the activation is every zombie will get an activation. Um, all the walkers will either move or attack. In this case, because there's no survivor in their zone, they will move towards the zombies or the survivors that they can see. Um, in this case, Samson. If they could not see anybody, then say they were over here, they couldn't see any survivors, then they would move towards the most noise, which the most noise is this zone right here, because remember, each survivor counts as one noise. Uh, so these walkers would move one activation and get a little bit closer. This walker would also move towards them because he can see them. The runner gets two activations, so he would move. 
And then because there's no survivor in the zone, he would move again, and that would be his two activations. And these zombies down here, the walkers would move for their activation. And the runner gets two activations, he would move, and then he would attack. His second activation would be attacking. Now the way attacking works is there's going to be one damage that has to be applied to either Samson or Nanali. The two survivors can decide between the two of them who's going to take the damage. Um, Samson can choose to take all the damage if there was five zombies doing damage to him. Um, and the best thing to do would probably be have Samson do it, because remember, he has armor. So Samson is going to take one damage from this runner, but he has an armor, so he's going to try to do an armor save. And the way that works is you take the amount of dice equal to the amount of uh, damage you're going to take, so in this case one, and you would roll a dice and try to get it above the armor value of the of the armor you're wearing. So in this case we need a four or more. <laughs> so Samson had some bad luck and his armor didn't do him any good. Um, he didn't get an armor save so the runner would do one damage to him. So we'd come down here to Samson's board and move his marker up one. So now he's been he's been damaged one time. And that is the activation. After all the zombies have moved, the zombie activation phase is done, and we go to the zombie spawning. Um, you'll pick a spawn point, and you'll always start with the same spawn point, and you'll just go in clockwise order spawning zombies. So the we'll start with this zone up here. We'll flip a card from the zombie spawn deck. And then, if you notice, the spawn card is broken down into colors, blue, yellow, orange, and red. This corresponds to your dashboard <clears throat> on your player board. So whichever player has the highest amount of experience, you'll go off of that color. So Samson has eight experience points and is in the yellow. Nelly over here has one experience point and is in the blue. So Samson being the highest will go off of his board and so we look at the yellow uh, section on the card. Um, so in this case, that spawn point is going to spawn four walkers. So we take four walkers, put them up there, and now there's four zombies up there. And we do the same for this spawn point over here. Flip the card, and this time we drew a necromancer. So we would take a necromancer spawn point, place it there, take our necromancer, place him there, and we would do another spawn for his uh, spawn point. Which in this case, we look at the yellow, it's two runners would spawn with the necromancer. Then we'd come down to this spawn point, do the same thing, and we got two more walkers. And that would be the zombie spawning completed. Now there is one little difference for the zombie spawn. There's one more card in here that I want to go over before we before we wrap up here. There's a card that's a double spawn card. And when you draw one of these double spawns, let's say we had started up here and we drew a double spawn, you wouldn't spawn zombies on this zone, but we would go to the next zone and draw two cards and spawn two cards on this zombie spawn. Um, so in other words, we'd come over here, we'd draw two cards, and we'd activate them in order of the way we drew them. So the first one we drew is a Necromancer. If the Necromancer is already on the board, then the Necromancer just activates again and moves. Um, so that's a bummer deal. And remember, the Necromancer is going to move towards the closest spawn point um, that's away from where he came so that he can exit the board and, and get out of there. The, uh, and then we do the second card, which is going to be three more walkers. Um, if we had three more walkers, we'd place three more walkers over here. And that's how you do the double spawn. Now, if, for instance, there's one more rule. If we had drawn another double spawn, we would resolve the Necromancer card. And then we would uh, go to the next spawn point and draw two more cards. and resolve them. Uh, so there is, a, there is that chance if you drew multiple double spawns, you could end up pushing 
uh, you know, doing double spawns all around the board. And actually, if we'd drawn another double spawn here, we would have drawn four cards over there. Um, and so that's how this double spawn works, and that's how zombie spawning works. So next, some cards in the deck, in the spawning deck. They give an act, extra activation to a, to a certain type of zombie. So this one gives all standard runners one extra activation. So in this case, you wouldn't spawn any zombies. You would actually just give all the runners another activation. So they would do their two they would do their two actions of either moving twice or moving and attacking. Um, and so there's there's those things to keep in mind. Um, uh, anytime you're doing you're spawning new zombies, if you spawn a zombie type, say you're supposed to spawn uh, you know six walkers, but say you don't have any more walkers, all the walkers are on the board. Well, in that case, if you run out of figures and you don't have any more walkers, is what you would do is all the walkers on the board would get an extra activation, so they would all immediately move again or attack depending on what zone they're in. Um, so you have to be careful to let too many zombies get on the board. Otherwise, uh, you'll, you'll allow them to get more activations. Um, oh yeah, that's the other thing. So we talked briefly um, earlier in the video about when you open a door, you spawn in the rooms. Um, and that's, now that we know how to spawn, uh, when you open a door, you'll go one room at a time. And you'll flip over a spawn card and spawn in this room. So in this case, we would do four walkers. So we'd add four walkers into this room. Then we'd go to the next room that's connected to the to the to it. And we drew a necromancer. So the necromancer that's already on the board would move again. Or if we didn't have a necromancer on the board, a spawn point would be created right there. And the necromancer would come out right there. Um, and then we'd go to the next room that's connected and do another spawn point. Necromancer, so he'd get another activation, he'd move. And we go to this room back here, uh, two runners. And so we got, let's say we have these two runners. And we do that all the way throughout the, the room in which all these rooms are connected, so we do the entire building. And so we'd end up with something probably kind of like this. And that would be spawning. That would all spawn because we open this, this door into that building. Uh, so anytime you, anytime you open a door into a building for the first time, you'll spawn and fill that building up. Um, and so that's, that's your spawning. And that's, that's, the, uh, that's how you play the game. That's a, pretty, that's a really in-depth look at the game. Uh, but that's how you play Zombicide Black Plague. Um, you're going to be doing every new round, you'll pass the player, player marker to the next player. Uh, you'll do your player phases where all your characters will use their actions, uh, moving, searching, fighting, opening doors, running away. Um, and then when all the players are done, the zombies will take their actions and they'll move and attack. And then you'll spawn move more zombies. And then the end phase, you'll do kind of a cleanup. You'll remove all the noise tokens from the board and pass the player token to the next person. All right, so that's uh, so that's Zombieside Black Plague. Um, it's a really fun game. You can see that the zombies can get overwhelming. Uh, it's a game where you always feel like these zombies are moving towards you, and they're they're really breathing down your neck. They're really pushing you to, you know, make decisions of, uh, you know, do we go for this activation token, or do we fight off some more zombies because we're running out of walkers, you know. Um, or is, is, it too, is it too hairy to get over in there? Are we going to get trapped? Um, what if the zombies get an extra, extra activation? Uh, they'll be able to attack us. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're playing the game, uh, which makes where it's a cooperative game, um, it really brings everybody into the conversation of deciding what to do. Um, you know, And as a team, you're deciding what's the best places to go. Do we split up? Do we stick as a group? Because if you know, if we're in a big group of six characters, you know, we can absorb a lot of damage. Or if we split up, we can go and get some of these activation tokens a lot quicker, um, and be able to move around the board faster. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting choices you got to make in this game. Um, it brings for a lot of interaction between the players, um, and because of that, this game has always been really good for introducing new people into, into the hobby. 
um, just because it provide it promotes a lot of player interaction and working together to defeat the hordes of zombies. Uh, so Black Plague, I highly recommend this game. Um, if, if you want to know more about our opinions on it, watch our review. And uh, thanks for watching.